Welcome. Today is Wednesday, May 17th, 2017, and this is the Natural Hazards Engineering 101 webinar series. It is intended to provide a common knowledge base for the NERI community. Uh, for each of the primary natural hazards in the NERI program, webinars in this series provide an introduction to fundamental concepts and an overview of experimental and simulation-based research. Webinars will also provide an introduction to numerical methods and computational tools used in NHE research. For more information on past webinars and, un and upcoming webinars, please visit the NERI website at designsafe-ci.org, where you can find links to the Sim Center and NERI Learning Center pages. Today's webinar is coordinated by the Nat Natural Hazards Engineering Research Infrastructures Simulation and Computational Modeling Center. The webinar is supported by the National Science Foundation under awards 1612843 and 1520817. Any statements in this webinar are those of the presenter and do not necessarily represent the views of the National Science Foundation. Today's presentation is by Professors Chowdhury, er, uh, er, Professors Chowdhury, Irwin, and Zisis from the Florida International University. FIU is one of NERI's experimental facilities with a state-of-the-art large-scale uh, uh, wall of wind. This webinar describes the capabilities, uniqueness, and resources at the wall of wind. Professor Arendam, Arendam Chowdhury is Principal Investigator and Director of the Equipment Facility. He is a recipient of NSF's Career Award and FIU's President's Council Worlds Ahead Faculty Award, which is the university's highest rec recognition for faculty members. Professor Peter Irwin is a Professor of Practice at Florida International University. He has a long track record of consulting work at RWDI, where he worked on major structures, including some of the world's tallest buildings. Professor Giannis Zisis is a co-principal investigator of the NSF Neary Wall of Wind Experimental Facility. His research focuses in structural and environmental wind engineering. He has been using advanced experimental methods, including wind tunnel and full-scale monitoring techniques to examine how residential and other structures react to extreme wind events. The title of their presentation is Experimental Based Research in Natural Hazards Engineering. And I hand the floor over to Professor Chowdhury uh, if you'd like to begin. Thank you, Matt. And good afternoon, everyone, all the participants. Um, we'll first show the agenda for today's um, seminar. So we have, uh, we'll talk about the wind engineering experimental tools, the overview of the experimental methods and instrumentation, some of the overview of the applications, um, capabilities and resources at various wind EFs, um, the science plan, um, some case studies, and also use of experimental results to validate computational and numerical approaches. And we are going to end with the Nihiri um, wall of wind support and services. So this presentation will be done by three of us. So I'm going to just start with the wind engineering experimental tools. Um, so much of this has been already said by Dr. Kurt Gurley in the first, um, series, first seminar of this series. So I'll be brief um, on the experimental tools that are available. So the first one is the field studies that are often done. So the um, photo you see is the Texas Tech full-scale building on a rotating uh, turntable. And um, it has also the high meteorological tower. So this building collects pressure data at full scale, field measurements. And these are used for validation of uh, wind tunnel results. So this is one of the field studies that are done in wind engineering validation purposes. The second uh, method is uh, very well known, which is done with the boundary layer wind tunnel testing. So here you see a wind tunnel model of a tall building with all the surroundings. And um, you can also see the flow management, which consists of spires and roughness elements to develop the atmospheric boundary layer and also the turbulence characteristics that are needed 
And again, these models are instrumented with either pressure taps or load cells or other instruments to get the data on wind effects. Next. Um, there are other wind events like tornadoes and thunderstorms and uh, there, these are the photos of two facilities, one at the Iowa State University and Texas Tech University. Um, these are both tornado simulators where they simulate tornadic winds and do research on tornadic effects on buildings and other structures. And finally, we have also new facilities like the Wall of Wind facility or the IBHS facility. So these are large scale boundary layer wind tunnels. These are mostly open jet facility. And uh, these can do either large scale or full scale testing. And as um, you are going to hear, through today's presentation, one of such facilities, the wall of wind, which is a Nihiri EF, or an experimental facility for wind effects on structures. So the overview of experimental methods and instrumentation. Next slide. So I'm just going to talk about two um, main methods. One is aerodynamic testing. So these are done on rigid models. Um, this photo shows like a modeling of a low rise buildings and it has photovoltaic arrays on the roof. So generally pressure taps are installed on the building facades and the roofs and the wall and also building components. Like here we can see PV panels where we can put pressure taps on the top and bottom of the PV panels. You can see the pressure tubing, numerous of them, the black tubes. And we collect um, the pressure data on the pressure taps and then we process it based on various conditioning techniques to get the wind effects on low rise buildings or any rigid models um, and their components. The next one is what is called an aerolastic model. And I got this picture from a wind tunnel where they're testing a long span bridge. And what I mean by aerolastic model is as opposed to a rigid model, these models, they simulate also the dynamic properties of the structure of the prototype structure in terms of mode shapes, natural frequencies, and other dynamic effects. So uh, we can get the wind effects as um, the displacement of these systems interact with the flow and there is a aerolastic feedback. So these are not rigid models, these are flexible models, especially for structures that have low damping and low stiffness, for example, long span bridges and very tall buildings. A lot of instrumentations are used to collect data from these aerodynamic or aerolastic models, and I've listed some of them. So we can collect uh, wind speed and turbulence data using COBRA probes. We can get uh, wind effects on the building in terms of loads using load cells. We can have strain gauges, pressure scanners to obtain differential pressures. Generally accelerometers and the string pods or LVTDs are used when we are doing aerolastic models so we know information on the vibrations and the wind in induced dynamic effects. We can also measure displacement using laser sensors. Um, and if we have to do rain simulation in a facility, then we have equipment like Percival, disdrometers, and rain measurement gauges to get information on wind during rain. We also do uh, video testing or video recording using um, HD cameras. We can also do flow visualization using uh, smoke generators or, or other devices. So I'll give you an overview of the applications of these wind injuring facilities. So as pertaining to the natural hazards area, mainly we look at buildings. So we look at impacts of hazards and mainly wind hazards we are talking about, which could be hurricane, thunderstorm, tornadoes. And we want to know the functionality of a building or its components following a disaster. So we want to measure the performance of these buildings to these wind hazards. Other than the buildings, we also want to know um, impacts of these hazards on our infrastructure and which includes traffic, transportation, power grids, communication towers, etc. One of the big goal is to do natural hazard mitigation for multi-hazards so that uh, we ensure that these kind of um, hazards do not become societal disasters. So we have to come up with mitigation methods. Uh, smart materials is another um, Topic. So we can develop new sustainable materials using um, these kind of facilities. We can do 
studies on risk and reliability. So that will help risk inform decision making for community resi resilience. And as I already showed you that it's not only the um, hurricane or straight line winds, there could be non stationary events like thunderstorms and tornadoes, which some of these facilities can also simulate. When um, we talk about fundamental research areas, other than the main wind engineering field, we can talk about uh, fluid mechanics and fluid dynamics. So there could be users uh, or faculty that want to use this facility to perform research on basic fluid mechanics principle and fluid dynamics principle. Computational simulations such as CFD, computational fluid dynamics methodology and validation can be done using these facilities. Occupant com comfort at let's say lower wind speeds, which includes acceleration on the top floors of tall buildings or maybe pedestrian comfort. Uh, can be also looked at using these facilities. There is a trend to look at renewable energy systems in terms of wind turbines and photovoltaic systems. So these facilities can help users to get more information on sustainable and renewable energy systems. Users can also look at um, sustainable communities in terms of building smart cities or um, designing um, methods to reduce the um, dependency on um, non-renewable energy so they can go with natural ventilation using large-scale models in these facilities also users can focus on non-linear dynamic systems so this is not inclusive but just gives you some um, notes on how the facilities can be used outside the main wind engine research areas next so I'm going to talk about the capabilities and resources at the two wind facilities. The first will be the Nihiri Wall of Wind uh, experimental facility as, at Florida International University. So let's go to the next slide. So just a brief background on the Wall of Wind. Um, the Wall of Wind was developed uh, as a legacy of Hurricane Andrew that battered uh, South Florida in 1992. And uh, a wind engineering program is here since 2005 at FIU. The 12 uh, fan wall of wind uh, has been operational since 2012. We have more than 50 journal publications. We have two patent applications. Numerous uh, PhDs have graduated using our wind engineering program. We have also postdocs. And we have research funding for various agencies, including NSF and USAID, DOE, FDOT, and other, and including also industry. Um, we have a good team, which we are going to talk about, but uh, just want to mention that Dr. Arwin has a lot of experience in designing iconic structures, for example, Burj Khalifa, Petronas Towers, which are the tallest buildings, um, and he has studied wind effects on those, and Dr. Zisis have experience in codification. We have done research uh, more than 10 million since 2012 using the Wall of Wind facility. Uh, this is the team, so we have, um, our site operations manager, Dr. Miriam Rafan, and we have wind engineering faculty, including myself, Dr. Arwin, Dr. Zisis, and we have a new faculty joining um, Dr. Emil Amal Alawadi. We also have our um, education and outreach leader, STEM leader, Laird Kramer. And then on the right side, you see our lab staff. We have the um, laboratory and environmental health and safety manager, Walter Conklin, project manager, Roy Liu Marcus, uh, Rafael Greenbaum is our research specialist. Um, also, Ashkan Rasuli is our research specialist looking at various test protocols. And Bodhisattva Hajra is a postdoc and also a research scientist. So what is unique about uh, the wall of wind? One of the things that we can do, we can simulate category five hurricane winds uh, in excess of 157 miles per hour. We are capable of doing multi-scale testing. That means we can do small scale testing of models in the range of one to 100 or one to 50. But we can also do large scale modeling at let's say a scale of one to 10 or one to five. And then we also can do full scale testing of the entire systems or a part of a full scale building. So that's why we have the multi-scale testing capability. Uh, because we are an open jet facility and we are not, um, bothered about uh, damaging our fans, we can do destructive testing. That means we can test structures till the failure occurs so we can study the progressive damage and we can study the failure modes of buildings and infrastructure elements. One of the component of especially hurricane um, scenario is we get a lot of wind-driven rain and Wall of Wind has a capability of producing wind-driven rain. 
and we can study the water intrusion through building envelope and breaches and defects. Um, we not only look at buildings, but we can look at various other infrastructure elements, for example, bridges, renewable energy systems, power infrastructure, communication infrastructure, traffic signals, so on and so forth, which Dr. Zissis is going to show you the case studies today. So um, this is a picture of the wall of wind. It has a big wind field of a 20 feet wide by 14 feet um, high wind field. It's done by, driven by 12 electric fans in an arc arrangement. We can go up to wind speeds from all the way up from uh, 10 miles per hour to uh, excess of 150 miles per hour. We can simulate various terrains like open suburban uniform terrains. We have a large turntable that can simulate the wind direction. So we can get the effects of the wind coming from various directions um, on, the, on the structures that we are testing. Next. These are various components of our facility. You can see the, on the top left, the wall of wind building, uh, the blue building which houses the wall of wind. On the top right, you see the controls room for where we control the fans, as well as we um, do the data acquisition on various sensors and instruments. On the bottom, you see the flow management um, that uses the spires and the roughness and also the rain simulation nozzles. On the middle bottom, you see the wall of in turntable, the 16 feet diameter turntable uh, with a large scale model on this. And you can see the roughness elements that creates the uh, terrains that we want. And also on the um, bottom right picture, you have the staging area where we construct all our models before they are tested on the turntable. We have three different test protocols. One is um, we call the physical measurement test protocol where we simulate various terrain roughness, uh, various wind speed and wind durations, and we are mainly measuring aerodynamic pressures. The second one is associated with the failure mode where we are doing destructive testing and we do video recording of the damage initiation, the progressive damage and uh, propagation of failure modes. And the last one is the one that includes the wind and rain, so where we have to specify the nozzle types, the spacing and the arrangement to get the particular uh, target rain rate and the rain um, size drop or the rain drop size distribution and the rain intensity that we want to simulate in our facility. Next. So now moving to the capabilities of the other facility, which is um, at the University of Florida, the Paul Family Structures and Materials Laboratory. They have a large boundary layer wind tunnel, as you can see. Um, with um, the specifications given on the on the left and it shows all the roughness elements and in the next uh, slide it shows uh, a unique capability which is called the terraformer so with the help of the terraformer they can change their roughness very quickly and um, i'm sorry the fire alarm <laughs> went uh, went off so we just got scared anyway <laughs> So we got the terraformer here, which, which has the capability of changing the roughness very quickly. So they can do uh, terrain configurations of uh, ABL very quick. And in the next slide, you're going to see the various terrains that they're able to simulate using the terraformer. And it goes all the way from a flat open country terrain to an open and suburban terrain to a suburban or a dense urban terrain. And that's the efficiency of the terraformer because everything can be done um, in a few seconds. Next. This is another um, multi-scale wind simulator at UF, which is called the MALS. And it can simulate full-scale dynamic pressure loads on full-scale specimens and uh, in pressures which exceed 300 PSF. So if you want more information on these uh, kind of equipment, you can uh, contact the faculty members at the University of Florida. Okay, I'm going to give you some examples of the recently funded NSF projects involving the various uh, Wall of Wind and the um, University of Florida experimental facilities. So this is uh, a project by um, Abdullah Safi uh, Zeda from Ohio State University. This looks at multi-dimensional fragilities for hurricane resilience enhancement to transmission systems. As you can see in the photo on the bottom, um, there are many such transmission systems, but what are their performance and what are the risks? Um, that's something which is kind of unknown. So what we are going to do, we are going to 
perform a series of aeroelastic wind tunnel testing, large scale aeroelastic testing on the wind response of these transmission systems. And Dr. Abdullah is going to produce a numerical model to simulate their risk uh, and assessment performance. And that um, particular numerical framework will be validated using these experimental results. And then that framework can be used for various other configurations to find first the vulner vulnerability of the systems and what could be the mitigation to enhance the wind resistance of these kind of um, transmission line systems. The next project is by a PI Eongzib Han, where we are looking at potential risk of wind induced uh, cascading damage to construction projects. Um, in the US, we have various places where you have these kind of construction projects where um, you have the materials and cranes and other equipment in the constru construction site. But um, there is very less data to know how these uh, equipment or the materials on the construction sites will be impacted by wind hazards. So there will be experimental simulation on some of these models of um, materials and equipment like crane and other instruments on the site. And there will be also a physics based modeling. Again, that will be validated from the experimental data to come up with a de decision making framework to know what to do if there is a hurricane or a windstorm coming and you are managing a construction project site. Um, the last example I'm going to give you is a project at the University of Florida. This is um, the title is Cyber Physical Systems Approach to the Optimal Design of Structures for Wind Hazards. The PI is Brian Phillips from University of uh, Maryland. And the CPS or the Cyber Physical System Approach will combine wind tunnel testing supported by the University of Florida facility with computer augmented design to produce optimal structural design faster and uh, with greater confidence than doing it purely experimentally or purely computationally. So these are a few of the examples of the recently funded NSF projects that are going to use the wind facilities at FIU and UF. So now I'm going to hand over to Dr. Peter Arwin to continue with the Nihiri science plan and also the science plan specific to the wall of wind. Okay, thank you, Arendam. Can everyone hear me fine? Good. The uh, Nihiri science plan is really uh, a, a high level plan uh, which can help guide the individual NERI facilities as to their own plans. Um, so some overarching goals are first of all to understand, model and project the life cycle performance of civil engineering infrastructure uh, in different hazard events. And also uh, another goal is to try and move towards more computational modeling and away from physical testing. So you could argue that one of the goals of the war of wind is to put ourselves out of business in the end. But um, I'm sure there are so many challenges in computational modeling, we'll be in business for quite a few more years yet. Uh, the war of wind though is a very useful tool uh, as are the other testing facilities for validating computational modeling. It's an essential uh, part of the process of developing the modeling. Uh, but also um, another goal is to build the basic science knowledge and simulation capabilities so that we can evaluate um, the resilience and, and sustainability of civil infrastructure and communities. Although it, this is an engineering program, um, basic science is closely linked to the engineering that goes on and there's an interplay backwards and forwards between the application of the basic science and engineering and feeding back questions that can help um, advance the basic science. Also another over, overarching goal is to translate the research that we do into innovative mitigation strategies and technologies to reduce the impact uh, of natural hazards on existing and, and, civil and uh, new civil infrastructure. Uh, finally, uh, research uh, forms a, a stimulating environment for spreading the word, I guess, and creating enthusiasm for uh, STEM 
uh, education. And uh, so this is a goal is to integrate the research, education and outreach so as to train a broad and inclusive STEM workforce to conduct and translate research into innovations. So those are the long-term overarching goals of the science plan of, of, of NERI. Uh, as far as the wall of wind is concerned, we obviously are a, a wind testing facility. So it, it is natural that we can be used to uh, validate computational fluid dynamics modeling and also other types of numerical simulation methods such as nonlinear structural interactions with the uh, fluid mechanics. Another uh, area where uh, the wow or water wind um, is important is in advancing or improving the performance of the building envelope under wind and wind driven rain. Experience has shown us that in the big wind storms that occur, it is the building envelope that is the weak link. And so obviously um, that's where there's if you like, some low-hanging fruit to be gained by undertaking research into the performance of building envelopes. And this, the wall of wind is a very good tool for doing that because we can have both wind and rain applied at the same time. Uh, the, the wind loading on buildings and other structures is very affected by the shape and by the surroundings of the structure. So the wall of wind uh, is very useful for looking at those kinds of, of impacts. Um, traditionally, uh, wind tunnel testing has been mostly used on big structures like tall buildings, bridges, large stadiums, uh, and other large structures. And often the um, scales of, of, the, of the scale models that are used for these are quite small, like one to 400 or one to 500, one to 300, they're in that range. And the classic boundary layer wind tunnel testing methods have been applied well on those structures for many years. But uh, the economics of wind tunnel testing is such that most of the smaller structures like a single family home or small industrial structures um, are not tested specifically on a project by project basis. They rely more on generic testing. Um, but the testing on these small structures generally requires larger model scales. And this requires some changes to the methodology in the wind tunnel testing. And so uh, the wall of wind has focused particularly on how to test for wind effects on small structures. Uh, Wind-induced vibrations is another area where many failures uh, are caused by this kind of phenomenon. Uh, the water of wind is a, is a good tool for looking at these because often the vibrations occur at high wind speeds and the wide range of wind speeds of the water wind allows us to look at these. Uh, besides quantifying wind loading and vibrations, uh, by having an experimental facility, one can also investigate mitigation measures. You can actually try them out in the real conditions. So this is another focus of the Wall of Wind science plan is where possible to develop mitigation techniques. And uh, these often come out of looking at the experimental results that we get. Uh, many of the failures of, uh, of buildings in windstorms have been found to due to, have been due to uh, the, the variations in, in construction quality that we see. Traditionally, smaller buildings have been built uh, using crafts built up over generations, and not all of them are engineered. Uh, as a result, the uh, range of, vul of vulnerability to uh, wind loading and storm impacts is highly variable um, on small buildings. However, at a, at a place like FIU, we, we have been looking and intend to keep on looking at engineered building systems where the construction is taken more out of the hands of local contractors and more onto the factory floor. And this uh, allows better quality assurance to be obtained and also allows experimentation with new sustainable materials. 
uh, performance-based engineering has been advanced a lot in the seismic field because it's been found to be very necessary for the, the uh, economical design against earthquakes, especially for large structures. The same techniques can in fact be applied in wind engineering and there are probably many things to be gained in terms of um, uh, more sustainable buildings costing less uh, because probably we're over designing the big structures at the moment but also uh, the areas where we know the performance like of the building envelope is not up to the same level of the, of the performance of the main structure so that's another area where the wall of wind can play a role um, We've already seen in Arindam's uh, part of the presentation some of the projects involving sustainability and green energy, such as looking at wind loading on solar panels. Uh, the wind loading of uh, wind turbines is a, another area that we can also look at. So that's another general part of our science plan is to uh, advance knowledge in those sustainability and green energy areas. Uh, the resiliency of infrastructure is very important to recovery from the storm impact uh, and so is public safety. So by looking at um, the, uh, the impacts of storms on construction sites, uh, flying debris, uh, looking at the performance of traffic uh, control systems and so on, uh, we can advance the infrastructure resiliency against storms. And finally, uh, Arindam did also mention th that um, another part of our science plan is to look at, at uh, non-straight line winds like tornadoes and short duration storms such as thunderstorms, which can create downbursts. Now, while we cannot simulate uh, tornadoes directly in the wall of wind, we, we, it is beneficial to compare what we can obtain in the wall of wind with what is obtained in other tornado simulation facilities to see how much we can take data from the wall of wind into the uh, prediction of tornado effects. Next slide, please. Uh, one of the items that we should mention is that um, we have found that uh, often in, the, in analyzing the test data that comes out of the wall of wind, if I could have the next slide, please. Um, that there's been a need to look at in, in detail at the way the data is analyzed in order to get the best predictions out of it. One example of this is when we're testing smaller structures, they have to be built at large scale to get enough accuracy of the aerodynamics. But then in typical wind tunnels, uh, including the wall of wind, it is no longer possible to include the full range of scales of turbulence. Um, however, we have developed a technique called the partial turbulence simulation method, which allows us to um, uh, treat, if you look at the diagram on the left hand side, it's sort of si uh, simplified into a, a very low frequency wave type of variation of the wind speed. And then superimposed on that is turbulence happening at much higher frequencies. Uh, we can simulate the turbulence in the wall of wind and then we can use statistical methods to combine what we get from the wall of wind with those low frequency fluctuations to come up with predictions of things like the peak pressure coefficient which is shown on the right uh, as a function of probability of exceedance. In a talk like this there's no and you know, there isn't time to go into the details but those kind of Prediction methodologies are available also to users of the War of Wind if you would like us to apply them to your data. Next slide, please. Um, in any experimental method, it is just like with computational methods, it is a good idea to compare what your predictions are with uh, some full scale real data obtained in the field. And the partial turbulence simulation method has been subject to this kind of scrutiny and we have compared it with data from that uh, cube you can see in the field on the left hand side, the Sulso cube as it's called uh, in the UK where a lot of good data was obtained and also the Texas Tech University um, 
field building that you saw earlier in Arindam's presentation. And on the right, you can see an example of comparing data from the wall of wind with that full scale data. And so through those kind of comparisons, we can get confidence that our methods are correct. So I'll move on to the next slide. And at this point, I'm going to hand over to Professor Yanis Zisis, who's going to do the next part of the presentation. Thank you, Dr. Erwin. So in the following slides, uh, we have put together a collection of case studies that are related to experimental wind engineering. The first case study is a full-scale destructive study uh, with a focus on uh, wind induced loads on studying seam metal roofs. In addition to the full scale model, a uh, small scale rigid model was constructed and we measured the pressures on the roof. I should mention that the standardized test for these types of roofs uh, is through the application of a uniform suction. So, what we do at the wall of wind is very different than uh, the standard test. The scope of the research was to evaluate the performance of these type of roofs under realistic hurricane level winds. And as you can see in the photos, uh, we chose two common uh, profiles for studying seam metal roofs. And we tested them. The first one was the vertical leg standing seam roof. And the second one was the trapezoidal standing seam roof. I have here, uh, some results, these were obtained from the pressure tabs. So these are dimensionless pressure coefficients for uh, different wind angles of attack. We have the two cases. So basically we have results from the two different profiles for the standing seam metal roofs. And you can see the variation of the minimum peak pressure coefficient. And you cl it clearly shows that the, uh, one of the two profiles, which is the trapezoidal, experiences higher local suctions. This was also captured during the destructive type of testing. Here we have included a video of the vertical seam up to 157 miles per hour. And this is the trapezoidal at the same speed. You're gonna see the mode of failure. And it is clear that uh, a local high suction initiates this type of failure. The next case study is a multi-scale a uh, rigid model test that examines the wind induced uh, loads on glass railings of residential mid rise buildings. The rigid models uh, were, instrumented by, uh, were instrumented with pressure taps, and uh, we used pressure taps on both the external and internal surface of the balconies, as well as the uh, building walls. The scale of the models range from 1 to 25 up to 1 to 180. So starting with a large model and you can see also the very small uh, model in the photo. The findings from this study uh, generated very useful uh, data in terms of codification, data that we can use to codify the wind loads, but also revealed some uh, changes in the aerodynamics, the flow pattern around the building itself which affects consequently the pressures applied on the uh, building envelope. Furthermore, uh, results show that the wind loads on the balconies are quite sensitive to the model scale. And this is mostly due to the number of pressure taps that we use. So the larger model can accommodate more pressure, tap, more pressure taps, whereas the small model has less pressure taps. And that affects the uh, design uh, with loads. Moving to the next case study. This is a large scale test that examined the uh, wind induced uh, uplift of roof pavers. Uh, the roof pavers are uh, usually made from concrete. The scale that we used in this study was one to two. So it's a large scale model. And the pavers were instrumented with uh, pressure taps again. We consider several parameters in this uh, study, including uh, the spacing between the pavers, uh, the clearance below the pavers, between the roof and the pavers, and the 
effect of the presence of a, of a parapet. Uh, we even considered different heights for the parapet. One of the most interesting findings of this study was again related to the improved uh, pressure gradient resol resolution when we use more pressure taps. This is uh, demonstrated in the contour plots that we have in this slide. You can see four contour plots. These, uh, these contour plots refer to the same paper, but we've used a different number of pressure taps. So starting from four pressure taps in the first paper, then move to five, nine, and 15 pressure taps. And obviously, when we use more pressure taps, we get a much more detailed picture of the wind induced pressure on these uh, uh, roofing elements. The next case study uh, is uh, uh, wind induced loads on uh, PV systems, photovoltaic systems. This has been studied extensively in uh, wind tunnels the last few years. And uh, again, this study was uh, carried out at multiple scales at the wall of wind using different types of models. You can see uh, in the two photos in this slide, a full scale model with a rigid PV panel system instrumented with pressure taps. That is the top photo and that was made by uh, wood panels and then we have the exact same uh, roof but now we use actual pv panels that were instrumented with accelerometers in both cases we had load cells uh, at the support of the racking system so the interface between the racking system and the roof the objective of the particular study was uh, first to uh, gather to obtain critical pressure information that can be codified and uh, used in uh, future uh, wind standards and building codes, but uh, also to examine the dynamic response of such systems, of PV panels. Here I've included a video where you see the vibration of the PV panels. The tests uh, are carried out at different wind speeds, so we want to find out at which speed this vibration is initiated and we also consider different angles of attack. The effect of uh, vibration needs to be considered in the design of such systems and uh, as you may know there is a criterion AESC7 uh, that specifies wind sensitive uh, structures using the one hertz criterion for the natural frequency. We did hammer tests and we found that the frequency, the natural frequency of this system is way more than one hertz. It's approximately 11 hertz. So this is something that we need to consider when we design uh, these PV systems. This study is also related to codification. There was, uh, we use a large scale rigid model uh, of canopies that were attached on low uh, on low-rise buildings, that is the first photo that you see on the top left. And we also use canopies attached to mid-rise buildings. The canopies were instrumented with pressure taps on both top and bottom surfaces. This was a, a very detailed parametric study where we considered different geometries and several different configurations in order to generate a, a sufficient pool of data that can be used to develop design criteria for this structure. I should mention that uh, currently uh, there is no specific design guideline for canopies attached to uh, low-rise buildings and mid-rise buildings in the AESC 7 standard. Moving to a different area now, uh, Dr. Irwin briefly mentioned uh, the need for uh, testing uh, for infra infrastructure systems. So this study is related to the wind performance of infrastructure systems. More specifically, a span wire system with the three traffic lights was tested to up to category five hurricane winds. The system was instrumented with multiple sensors, uh, including load cells, accelerometers, inclinometers, and inertia sensors. Although the actual system can exceed uh, 100 feet uh, span length in reality in, in intersections, 
we were limited by the uh, size of the turntable. So we developed a shorter frame that we can place on top of the turntable and use it to uh, check different wind directions, rotate the frame, and examine the performance of the system for different wind angles of attack. To validate the results ob obtained from the short frame uh, configuration, we also tested the long span test frame, but only for a normal wind direction, so a single wind direction. Here you can see a summary of the results. That includes the overall drag and lift coefficient for the two frames, the long and the short span. So using the load cell data, we uh, evaluate, we calculate the total drag and lift, and uh, we compare between the two cases, and that confirmed the uh, validity of our methodology that we use to develop the short span test frame. This can also be seen uh, from these two videos. The video on the left shows the short span and the video on the right shows the long span. You see at the same wind speed, the system uh, uh, shows the same type of violent behavior. This was basically a very important finding of this study. These are dynamic instability that occurred at uh, a certain wind speed. This violent motion is present after uh, on the system, and uh, it can greatly affect the performance of these uh, traffic signals during strong wind, extreme wind events. The, the previous studies uh, group mostly on uh, structural applications. Uh, wind engineering is uh, also relevant to environmental applications. Another uh, big group of uh, studies that we do at the Wall of Wind Experimental Facility is related to wind-driven rain, uh, in, uh, wind-driven rain intrusion on, on residential and other structures. So this can be studied uh, here at WOW by using real structures. As you can see on the top left uh, uh, photo, we can use small models that are specifically instrumented to quantify uh, the wind-driven rain effects. And we should also mention that it is critical uh, in these studies to properly generate a realistic rain field that can be used uh, uh, that can be used in the uh, in the testing section. So for that purpose, we have the spraying nozzles. We do calibration of the flow uh, ahead of uh, the test, and we try to uh, simulate target uh, profiles. Here we've included a video of a large-scale model. And this is very interesting that uh, that model uh, has uh, special collection buckets uh, that can uh, measure not only the directly direct impinging rain, but also the surface runoff uh, rain on the building envelope. And as you can see on the video, there was significant deposition, rate deposition on the wind on the leeward side of the building. That was a very interesting finding of this study. You can also see the results uh, on this contour plot. So the wind is approaching from the bottom left corner. And you can see that uh, the leading edge corner regions receive less volume uh, surface runoff rainwater, whereas the uh, rainwater accumulation increases towards the leeward roof surfaces. A continuation of the previous study is related to the investigation of interior damage on residential structures. We use large-scale models of, diver, uh, of different damage scenarios, and we tested them considering uh, different degrees of uh, roof damage, window damage, or uh, wall uh, building uh, envelope uh, damage. These are three examples that we included in this slide. So the first group of photos on the left shows the no damage scenario. In the middle, we have the minor damages. And on the far right, we have the moderate damage. There was a need for an innovative method of measurement of the rain intrusion and distribution uh, uh, that needs to be incorporated in such studies. So we had special absorbing pads, and we tried to quantify the distribution in the internal compartments as well as the internal partitions. 
And that brings me to the next section of the presentation, which is the use of the experimental results to validate computational and numerical approaches. One of the Nihari visions, uh, as Dr. Inch, uh, Dr. Irwin mentioned, is to reduce the reliance on physical testing to computational modeling. So the FIU facility and the UF facility are, uh, uh, are going to be used to uh, serve this, uh, this scope. We have two examples uh, from ongoing uh, NSF funded projects. The first one is a, a project that deals with damage and instability detection of civil large scale space structures under operational and multi hazard environments. The PI, Grace, uh, Grace Young, uh, is aiming to detect the instability or damage of civil large scale space structures and to prevent structures from collapsing. In the first uh, stage of the study, advanced computational fluid dynamics modeling was carried out. So there are already results from the computational approach. And right now, we're in the process of building a large model uh, of a dome structure. We're gonna instrument the model with hundreds of pressure taps and we're going to use the acquired uh, wall of wind experimental data to validate uh, the two-way wind structure interaction uh, CFD model to reveal the dynamic response of a dome structure under extreme winds and finally to compare the wind effects between straight line winds and tornadic winds. The second example is uh, is a study that is utilizing the wall of wind experimental facility to validate a numerical, a finite element model that is led from uh, the PI of this project is Dr. Steve Kai from uh, LSU and is focusing on progressive failure studies of residential houses towards performance based hurricane engineering. The objective of this study is to address hurricane effects on residential structures. We included here uh, photos of the finite element model. You can see the structural system uh, and also you can see the physical model uh, using a scale one to four that was tested at the wall of wind. Here is a video of the actual test. You can see the damage. This is very important information for the calibration and validation of the numerical model. In addition to the pressure measurements that we provided in order to use them in the uh, Find element model. Uh, we also uh, provide information on the type of damage that we expect in uh, such structure. So overall, the wall of wind acquired data will be used to calibrate the nonlinear finite element model for this low-rise wood building. The data will be also used to validate the numerical modeling methodology uh, that is capable of simulating the nonlinear behavior of connections and also reduce the future dependency of, few, of uh, physical testing for evaluating other configurations. Before closing, we added a few slides that are specific to the NIERI Wall of Wind EF support and services to potential users, to future users. These uh, services provided by the WOW EF to the researchers include uh, the support regarding research planning for NSF proposals, the design, construction, and instrumentation of uh, the testing specimens. We work with the users to uh, uh, prepare the test protocol, develop the test protocol and the software implementation. Obviously, the operation of the facility and the acquisition uh, of uh, the data. We're gonna process and post-process the data if that is required by the user and uh, safety and uh, user training is a priority for us. We have uh, recently started uh, the telepresent capability of the facility so you can remotely participate and uh, watch and operate uh, or coordinate basically the test uh, along with the team here at FIU and if needed we provide office space and internet service for users during the visit. This is an overview of the proposal uh, development and planning stage. So 
I'm just going to go quickly through these bullets. Uh, the initial contact, that's the very first thing that we try to do, talk to the uh, user. And we develop the idea, the proposal, until the submission. And after all, there, is, uh, there are certain steps that we follow after the award is uh, announced. There is certain paperwork, the project kickoff meeting, and then we start with the testing and uh, the data acquisition. The project execution stage includes the following items, the user safety training, uh, the design, construction, instrumentation of test specimen. Uh, I think I, I mentioned these items in the, the previous slide, so I'm going to skip this one, save time. And we have three different services. We grouped our services in three different uh, uh, groups. The pre-testing setup, uh, the running time, and the post-test. Uh, we, uh, we are in communication with the user to identify the right amount of time that is needed for pre-test, actual test, and post-test services, and we account that in the budget of the proposal. Finally, uh, we, have, uh, we had user workshops in the past. We started with the 2015 joint FIU and UF uh, user workshop. Uh, we did the 2016 uh, NSF user workshop here in Miami, and we have the next workshop, the 2017 user workshop here, the Wall of Wind in uh, June 15 and 16th. Uh, during the workshop, we're going to share valuable information on the resources that are available here at FIU, the services that are provided by the team, how to plan uh, experimentation uh, to be included in your proposal. We're going to do a tour of the facility and uh, live test demonstration, and we're going to have two keynote uh, talks, one from Dr. Aksan Karim and one from Dr. Irwin. And there is also like a $600 uh, uh, reimbursement for the participants. So if you're interested to join the workshop, please go ahead and register. You can do that at the Design, Design Safe CI website. In addition to the user workshop, we offered uh, we offer uh, more uh, uh, a smaller group type of like uh, uh, workshop we call it the research planning workshop uh, the wall of wind uh, uh, offers that to individual or smaller groups we want to help the user to determine the best way to engage with the facility and uh, we invest uh, more time to uh, discuss uh, ideas that are uh, closer to uh, the full proposal submission. So if you're interested to do this type of uh, planning workshop, please contact our site operation manager, Dr. Mariam Refan. And that brings me to the last slide, which is basically questions. Great. Thank you so much. Um, at this time, we will open up the question and answer session, and attendees are reminded the questions should be submitted through the chat panel uh, and relayed to the moderator. Um, the questions, uh, the first question that's come in um, is, how is the wall of wind different from a conventional wind tunnel? Dr. Arwin will, can answer that. Okay, um, a conventional boundary layer wind tunnel um, <clears throat> typically uh, has a speed range uh, up to about uh, 20 meters a second or less, whereas the FIU facility goes up to more like 70 meters a second. So it's a much more powerful um, experimental tool than the typical boundary layer wind tunnel. Uh, the other thing is that the uh, size of the working section is 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 pretty respectable at 20 feet wide by 14 feet high, which is large in terms of most wind tunnels. Uh, but per perhaps one of the most important differences is that um, we uh, can do destructive testing. Uh, the as you can see from the current slide, basically the the uh, facility is in a large hangar type building with an opening at the front and an opening at the back. So when uh, sp test specimens start to fail, the debris can be blown out of the back of the facility and it's captured there by 
a, a wall basically and um, this is very different from a normal wind tunnel where if you have your test specimen starting to break up you can do a lot of damage to the wind tunnel which is obviously not a good thing. Um, but also um, of course we can simulate wind driven rain as well which is unusual for, um, for wind tunnels. So those are some of the differences. Um, uh, you know, it does make it a fairly unique facility. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is, what is the cost for testing at the uh, Wall of Wind? I'll take it up. Um, so the cost of the Wall of Wind is a subsidized cost because NSF is already paying for many services at the Wall of Wind. The exact cost structure is available on the Design Safe under our Facility tab. Um, but just to give you a rough estimate is for one day of testing using the wall of wind, um, it's about the new rate is about $1,400 compared to if we do it for an industry, which doesn't have any NSF support, that's $10,000 or more. So it's significantly less for um, users with NSF projects. Uh, we also have pre-test and post-test, which is before and after the testing. It's about $300 per uh, day. And again, it's about five or six times um, for industry testing. But all the actual costs are available on the Design Safe website. Great. And actually, could you put up your, uh, maybe one of the last slides that had the dates for the upcoming workshop, uh, just so we can write those down as well? Yes. In case of news, so June 15th and 16th. Excellent. And we still have um, room for about four or five people um, for our maximum capability. So we definitely encourage uh, participants to register as soon as possible. So we, they can have the opportunity of coming here. And uh, also we are going to provide the travel funds as we mentioned in the slide. Okay. Well, we are at the conclusion of today's Natural Hazards Engineering 101 webinar. On behalf of everyone in attendance, thank you, Professor Chowdhury, uh, Irwin, and Zisis, for taking the time to share the current experimental techniques and state-of-the-art practice in wind engineering, uh, as well as the, the capabilities and case studies at FIU's Wall of Wind. Um, to those of you in attendance, thank you for your participation and questions. Uh, you can find the contact information for today's speakers or review specifications for the Wall of Wind at FIU's website on designsafe-ci.org. The Sim Center has some exciting webinars coming up under the NHE 101 banner, uh, also within the Early Career Researcher Forum, and a third webinar series entitled Advances in Natural Hazards Engineering Simulation. Uh, look for these on the Design Safe website or check your inbox for emails from announce at designsafe-ci. If you aren't receiving these email announcements, check your DesignSafe account settings to include these types of announcements. Thank you very much for participating. Thank you.